Today I am driving the Mercedes-Benz 550 GLS, the most luxurious, the nicest, the best European three-row SUV you can buy. The Mercedes of three-row SUVs, if you will. Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm driving something that only has four cylinders as opposed to eight, and also is supercharged and turbocharged as opposed to being twin turbocharged. Very simple, because I'm convinced that this vehicle is one of the finest three-row European crossover SUVs built. And it is the 2017 Volvo XC90. Well, there's only one way to find out, Nathan. Race? Review. Review. Coming up right now in the fast lane car. Now, Nathan may have Thor's hammer right here in the headlights, but I've got it under the hood because I have a 4.7 liter bi-turbo eight cylinder that puts out 449 horsepower and 516 pound-foot of torque. And it has made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission that of course powers all four wheels. Supercharged, turbocharged, who cares? This is the engine that you want when you're buying a luxury three-row SUV. A couple other things about this car that I think um, are noteworthy. Okay. Um, first and foremost, it has an off-road mode. So while most people probably won't take it off-road, you can take this car off-road. So it does have hill descent control. I think the problem isn't the car, it's the wheels. Well, yeah, and that's the problem that, the, that, that affects a lot of these vehicles in this class. Luxury SUVs are being strapped down by the fact that they have these massive wheels that don't allow for good rubber uh, for off-roading and also can easily get marred up. And let's face it, the last thing you and I want to do is mess up the wheels on either of these cars, which is why, by the way, we decided not to go bash them off-road. Yeah, and I got a feeling that uh, one wheel probably costs more than we get paid <laughs> every month. Oh, easily. <laughs> easily, easily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we, we're, t we're treating these with uh, kit gloves, but there's a reason for that. All right, uh, here we come to the turn. Uh, let's uh, give this a little bit of uh, acceleration, and you will hear the, the thaw hammer. Fair enough. Here we go, here we yeah. go. Here we go. Two turbos. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that shoves your head right back into the seat. So check this out guys, the Volvo logo now points to where the little lever is to open the hood. Oh, look at that, Nathan! It's got four cylinders, how cute! What a cute little engine! It might be cute, but it has 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, channeled through an eight-speed automatic transmission going to all four wheels, and because mine is not a grosso pig, it gets 22 miles per gallon combined. I believe Romans get 16 miles per gallon combined. You know, Nathan, I'm really impressed by the interior of the Volvo and by this... Um, this whole display here? Yeah, I think this is the second best display in the car biz after the Tesla. I didn't think I was going to like this car when it first came out. When I saw pictures of it from the outside, I thought it was kind of humdrum and it, it, well, not so amazing. Then I sat in one and I thought, okay, well, this is a pre-production version. This can't possibly be what's going to be developed in the future, and sure enough, it was. Yeah, Volvo certainly gets the most improved automotive brand award in my book. I mean, they've gone from, like you said, basically the worst IP in the business to now... One of the best. One of the best, yeah. And uh, I love this kind of use of different colored woods, the way the stitching and then the leather and then the wood all interact together. It's just very elegant and very expensive. But I gotta tell you, right off the bat, your Mercedes has a better ride and is quieter. Yeah, I think because it's a little bit longer and wheelbase, it also helps soften up the ride. It's um, a heavier, like beefier vehicle too. Yeah, it feels a little bit more uh, engineered. So let's give it a little bit of the you-know-what and see just how this super turbo does. Sure, here we go. Just right. from here. Just from here. Very little lag and then sharp shifts. Feel that? Yeah, it's not like a wave of torque that's pulling you, but uh, it certainly is peppy, I would say. Oh, well, we went very, very quickly, and I think that that's part of it. It's deceptive. It's very smooth, but at the same time, unlike the Mercedes, you didn't feel your head kind of being pushed back into the seat.
Nathan, did you know that for 2017, Mercedes has redesigned the GL and made it into a GLS? Of course, the S stands for the S class of big crossover SUVs. And look at the size of this star, man. Look at how big that is. People will know you're driving a Mercedes when you're behind the wheel of this bad boy. Yeah, you can use that as a dish to eat a meal. Look, look at it this way. Mine is understated. Mine is showing lines that are crisp and simple. No waste to design anywhere. This is overwrought and this is really in your face. If you love the Mercedes-Benz interface, you're gonna love this one because, well, Mercedes has doubled down on the way you actually control the screen. Not only is there a rotary dial that lets you select, but there's also a finger option. So you can use your finger or you can use a dial, whichever one comes more naturally. Now, Mercedes-Benz has made this very driver-centric as a German automobile should be. There's beautiful carbon fiber here. Carbon fiber, seriously, in an SUV like this? <laughs> Come on. Nathan hates carbon fiber, but you know, I kind of like the look of this. I think it's uh, elegant and sharp and just very bespoke. There's also, get this, heated seats in the front and in the back. Yeah, are they cooled? Uh, no, no. Um, you can get heated and cooled seats in like a Hyundai Elantra, dude. Uh, no, I don't have, uh, but I've got a big star. Now, you know, this whole thing over here, mm. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Me too, neither. too many buttons, you know, got the telephone buttons over here, which, you know, is a legacy thing I've never used in my whole life. The, the, the whole, this thing here with the pad that you can draw on yeah. and the wheel and all that other stuff, I don't like. I don't like using it. Um, and frankly, the interior is on the older side in my book. It, and I, I, look, I'm sorry, but a vehicle that weighs as much as a school building that has um, inlaid carbon fiber, just makes no sense to me at all. It, it's it's a little silly. Are you I, saying this should be in a sports car? Well, yeah, I'm pretty much saying that should be in a sports car. Folks, I, I've been stunned by this interior. I think that this is one of the finest interiors in a road going car that sells for under $250,000, period. Everything is easy to use. It takes about an hour to get used to where everything goes in terms of button switches and dials. But for the most part, I would say that this whole system easily outpaces any SUV crossover, any vehicle actually in its class, easily, easily. Ugh, and this leather is so nice. The stitching, it's just beautiful. And this wood, yeah, it's real and it feels great. Hey Nathan, I've got a Bang & Olufsen stereo system. <sighs> well, I have what's called a Bowers & Wilkins. And you know what? I think mine's better. Shouldn't an Olufsen be in a Volvo? You know what I worry about though? Mm. It's a two liter. Imagine the tolerances that that engine has to have to put out 316 horsepower. I wonder about the longevity of that thing because that's a small engine moving a big car, almost 5,000 pounds. Okay, that's a really good point. Now, you know, we didn't do much talking about technology in these cars, but they both have a lot. This has this autonomous driving mode. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it semi-autonomous because obviously the manufacturer doesn't want to uh, take the liability on themselves. Of course, but basically not. under 30 miles an hour, it will almost drive itself with adaptive cruise control and kind of the lane keep feature. That's right. Uh, but the Mercedes also has that technology. So it they, does. They both have, uh, and of course this is a five-star safety pick. It's a Volvo, so Volvo has a safety, but Mercedes also has a safety. You know, there's a lot to like about both of these cars. Oh, um, without a doubt. Nathan, I do love the interior of this Volvo. I love that big sunshade that opens up and throws a lot of light in here. I love this Alcantara. But man, back here, it's not fit for man nor beast, at least not if you're over the age of 10. Well, uh, come on. You know, we're, we're, we're large adults, and so, yeah, I can't even close the seat all the way. But if you have kids in the third row, they'll fit. I will say this, the interior is scrumptious. Hey, how much does this bad boy tow? 5,000 pounds. <laughs> You know, that one tows uh, 7,500, 50% more. Uh, okay, well, you know, you also have a giant V8 that sucks a lot of gas, so I'm not too surprised. Yes, but it sucks it while towing a horse trailer. Damn. Yes, this Mercedes is almost $40,000 more, but here's what you're paying for. You're paying for German engineering. Nathan and I just spent almost 20 minutes trying to get in the back of that Volvo. Here, check this out. <laughs> now that is how it's done in Germany. I do have paddle shifters, Nathan, yeah. uh, which I probably would never use in this car. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, I, I am surprised that it doesn't have cold seats for $110,000. That is so bizarre. I mean, you can even see, like, where the blank is, where, yeah. the, where the button's supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah, a lot faster. Yeah, see, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah, is a yeah, lot yeah, faster. Yeah. And yeah. it sounds damn good. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, God, Mercedes knows how to make a V8. They sure do. Um, and I think style-wise, these are both very handsome vehicles. I, I griped about the exterior design on this being similar to the old one, which it is, and it does very Mercedes, but at the same time, yeah, it's handsome. I even like the red, and I don't like red cars. And you know, I'm not a big fan of this AMG uh, appearance package. I think if you're going to get an AMG, just go for the AMG. Don't just go for the appearance package. Yeah, it says AMG everywhere, but it's not an AMG. It doesn't yeah, have it's the big... kind of like why? Why be fake? You know, especially yeah. if you're in the club of having a vehicle like this. You get somebody who sits in here and knows the difference and go, oh wait, it's not an AMG. Oh, I see. Suddenly, you're kicked out of your golf club or your removed from your special spa or from the masons or whatever and you're absolutely right 16 mpg combined is a little uh <laughs> it's not truck like <laughs> it's not good nathan you pay a lot more a lot more but you get a lot more this back seat is certainly more usable for real humans yeah you know what i mean you and i fit fairly comfortably back here and uh i like the fact that the third row seat even has its own little vent that's nice yeah when it's time you get out of here check this out man Look at that. One. Oh, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And I do right. love the way that shade also retracts into the middle of the... Oh, uh, the, the yeah. dual pane sunroof. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. nice. And yeah, okay, this, this works. You know, my question is, and I'm struggling with this during this entire review, is, is a Mercedes worth almost $40,000 more? I'm going to say no. I'm gonna say no only because of how much you can get out of a vehicle that costs $72,000. And this is still a lot of money when you think about it. It is a lot of money, but it's also money that you could, this car can compete directly with an Acura, right? Which is on the lower end of the luxury scale financially. But we've already, I think, successfully proven that this can also compete with the higher end of the luxury scale, in this case, uh, Mercedes-Benz. So are you saying buy this Volvo and then with the added money go get yourself like a GLA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. What I am saying is that this is a very, very good vehicle. And I'm, I've, I've never made a secret about the fact that I am a little bit of a Mercedes-Benz fanboy. They tend to be the first with the good technology. They tend to be really good when it comes to overall build quality. Their engines are top-notch. Their transmissions are fantastic. They build great cars when you can compete with them nose to nose, well, that's something special. Yeah, yeah, and this car has won numerous awards um, and it continues to do so and I, I can see why. Um, you know, my only issue, and I'm a bit of a Volvo fanboy, so it's ironic that I'm kind of driving the Mercedes. Uh, my only issue with this car, like I said, is um, that four cylinder. I think, you know, for something costing 72,000, when you strap on a supercharger and a turbocharger, the fact still remains you've only got a four two liter uh, under the hood. That just seems wrong somehow. Maybe I'm too old school. It just seems wrong that you're paying $72,000 for a four-cylinder. Well, it's the future, my friend. Time to get used to smaller displacement engines everywhere. You know, Nathan, these cars are remarkably similar. 21-inch wheels, air suspension, air suspension. The biggest difference is, of course, under the hood and the fact that this one is 110000 and that one is only 72000 yeah, and fully equipped too, baby. I gotta tell you, in terms of if it were my money, I would buy this vehicle. I think it's a bargain for what you're getting and it has one of the nicest interiors I've ever seen. You know, I agree with you, but if I needed a tow and if I needed actual space in the back, I'd go for the Mercedes. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching and check out tflcar.com for more news, views. And real world reviews. And big ass stars. And by the way, if you guys wanna watch another cool video, Click up here to see me take this one off-road. Actually, the AMG version, not just the one with the AMG appearance package. And Nathan, where should they click if they want to subscribe? How about right down here? Yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs>